Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, we're going to talk about what we mean by closure and mathematics. In the middle of this video, we're going to give a formal definition of closure. But yeah, before that formal definition, we'll look at five examples. And then after that formal definition, we'll look at four additional examples. So in total, we'll look at nine examples. Now, closure is one of those things that we think we understand very easily. So we pass by it quickly. But it's worth the closer inspection that we're dedicating to it here in this video. Uh, you'll see that all nine examples are very interesting. Now, closure does not make sense without a binary operation and a set on which the binary operation is defined. So we have to specify a binary operation and a set anytime we're talking about closure. Now, let's consider these five uh, familiar binary operations. The first is addition, all too familiar. And then next is subtraction. And yes, you can argue the subtraction is really hidden addition, and you'd be right, right? Like x minus y is really x plus the negative of y, where the negative of y is the additive inverse of the number y, right? Okay, cool. Next is multiplication. And just like how we argue that subtraction is hidden addition, we can argue that division is hidden multiplication. And again, you'd be right. Uh, but we're going to treat uh, subtraction and division as like individual binary operations and unattached to addition and multiplication. And yes, this... Uh, final binary operation is not new either because exponentiation is repeated multiplication, right? Like where this number y is a positive integer, uh, x to the y means multiply x by itself y times, right? And so yes, exponentiation too is not a new binary operation, but we'll treat it as such. All right, now let's allow for star to be any of the five binary operations displayed. Okay, then uh, if we consider uh, our set to be uh, the set of positive integers, so that's like one, two, three, and so on, right? Like, just to be clear, then uh, we see that we get closure under addition, multiplication, and exponentiation. That is, for any x, y in the positive integers, x star y is going to remain in the positive integers if star is addition, multiplication, or exponentiation. These are pretty self-evident things. Um, so, um, you know, like, yeah, I'll just like write them down, but uh, they don't need uh, elaboration, right? Okay, okay, okay. And of course, we do not get closure under subtraction and division. For example, if we take two and three and the positive integers, then 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, is not in the positive integers. Yeah? Okay, cool. And similarly, uh, 2 divided by 3 is not in the positive integers. And so division is not closed um, when the set is the positive integers, and uh, neither is subtraction. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So here's what we just said summarized at the bottom. All right, so the formal definition that we promised. So for an operation star on a set S, S is set to be closed under star if X star Y is in S for any X, Y in S. So that's the formal definition. And so um, as per promise, let's look at the kind of slightly more interesting um, last examples. So uh, the instruction is say which of the following sets is closed under the given binary operation. So first let's look at R under division. And we quickly see that R under division is not closed because if we take A and R and divide it by 0 and R, then A divided by 0 is not an R, right? Okay, cool. So not closed. And if we take uh, the set of rational numbers without 0, so if we leave out 0 and just consider the set of rational numbers under division, then we see that for any x, y in the set of rationals, uh, without zero, we can say that x, y is like p over q or p and q are in the integers without zero. And we can say uh, similarly that y is some u over v where u and v are in the uh, integers without zero, right? Like, so then, so then we see that uh, x divided by y, right? x divided by y is going to uh, result in this here. And notice that p times v is an integer, not 0. And q times u is an integer, not 0. So pv over qu is and the rationals without 0. And so we see that under division, the rationals without 0 uh, 
are closed or is closed whatever proper grammar you want to use there all right all right all right and three is um the set of positive rationals under exponentiation remember the number two is a rational number a positive rational number to be specific in context and so is one half right okay two is two over one and one half is clearly one over two but yeah if we take those two positive rationals and use exponentiation one thing we can do is two to two to the power one half but that means the square root of two and we know that the square root of two is not a rational number let alone a positive rational number and so we see that uh, the uh, positive rationals under exponentiation not closed not closed okay cool and then finalement this example so if we take um, the set with elements negative 1 0 and 1 and then the binary operation the usual addition then the Cayley table um, here uh, would have in black all the possible pairings of elements of the set with other elements of the set. So um, the result is what's in black here. And clearly, if we look at what's in black here, they're all in this set here, right? So then we see that the set is closed under addition. All right, cool, 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 cool. Now, uh, just as a final note, notice that if we change the set from negative one, uh, zero, one to uh, this, which is if we turn it to negative two zero two instead of negative one zero one, then under multiplication it would not be closed uh, because, like uh, for example, negative two times two is negative four and that's not in the set. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I feel like uh, we are now very very well taken care of as far as closure and yeah. So we have closure. Yeah. All right. Take care. <laughs>